Hey, Hike fans. Uh, welcome back to um, a long-awaited uh, Ask Me Anything. Another Ask Me Anything. Kieran, the people have been going crazy for this, haven't they? I literally have had so many messages about bringing back the AMAs, bringing back the AMAs, and, yeah. and we've done it. We've done it. Popular yeah, demand. People getting violent about it. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what they were saying, bring it back. I'm sure it was. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll never bring it back. Never bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome, yeah. We've got some good questions as well, which is which is always great. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you for everyone that submitted them. Uh, and yeah. if anyone has any questions after this, uh, we'll obviously be doing more because you people love them so much. Um, so uh, look out for the post that we put on one of the groups, uh, and we can answer the questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we used to say leave your question below, but no one ever yeah. does that. <laughs> so there's no point even mentioning it. <laughs> but we've got what five questions. Five yeah, questions. Five really good questions. Um, so, got a good feeling about this one, Kieran. Awesome. Me too. Right. Okay. So, the first question is from Brett, um, who's asked Beyond the obvious consequences of not earning traffic from given countries, are there any other negative consequences associated with blacklisting specific nations from visiting your website? Um, so, what Brett's doing here is he's preventing um, visits from specific countries from hitting his website. I asked him how he's doing it. He's doing it via Cloudflare uh, firewall rules. So um, I know Kieran, you've got something to say. I suppose the answer is not really. The main consequence is you just won't get any traffic from that country. Um, I guess one of the things that um, I've worked with a client before who was doing this, but that what they didn't realize is they were losing out on traffic because their customers were sometimes based in those countries, whether they were there on holiday or they'd moved over there. Um, in certain countries that they were blocking, they were actually losing traffic because they actually wanted traffic from those people. They were just based in the nation. They were blocking it all. So that's one potential downside. It's not an SEO downside. It's just potential traffic downside. Um, and then yeah. Kieran, you were talking about like um, the way in which you can block them. Yeah. So um, one thing that I was thinking, if you are worried from an SEO consequence point of view, um, you could just make sure that with your firewall rules, you block people from the countries that you don't want them to come from but then you ensure that you don't block googlebot yeah. and i'm pretty sure that googlebot has specific range of ips um it definitely has its own kind of user agent string as well that you can specify to make sure that that doesn't get blocked um so probably if you're conscious from an seo point of view or from google calling your website point of view um then i'd probably just make sure that that's in there and they're whitelisted on on the uh, firewall so that they can always call the website yeah and you could allow like other search engines in those countries right so you know, other search engines like Yandex, ID, you know, there's specific to certain countries that you still wanted traffic from them or from them to be able to crawl your website so they could be served. Because so I, I guess, Brett, my guess is probably like bot traffic that's influencing you from particular countries and that's why you're blocking it. It's just a guess. So you might still want to allow real traffic for it. So, yeah. Cool beans. Awesome. Cool beans. So, so, yeah, next question uh, comes from Scott. Um, how much benefit do you do next gen images such as Web2? Um, give to SEO. Obviously, it's not the full story, but it is something that uh, is it something that we should rush to do. Yeah, we had a bit of chat about this before, didn't we? Yeah. So, um, really, the question here is not so much um, what benefit does um, next gen images give to SEO, but what benefit does improve page speed? Because the whole point of um, using next gen images is to prove load speed, right? So that's why Google report is why we report it in Hike. And um, so it's. The question really is how much does page speed impact SEO? And page speed does impact SEO, right? So Google added it as a ranking factor, announced that in, in 2018. Um, so yes, it is part, but really it should be treated as part of the mix. Um, sometimes people, um, we're talking about, sometimes people just, just think SEO is all about page speed. You know, whether that's like miscommunication from um, other people in the industry, because it's something you can easily, tangibly, you know, show this is my speed before, this is my speed afterwards. And, you know, it's important, it's a ranking factor, but it's part of the big mix. You know, it's not like you've got a website, you increase the speeds like less than a second, you're gonna rank top for everything. It's like, it's not, it's, it's not gonna have that kind of impact. Um, it is part of, you know, the many ranking factors, right? So just work on the speed, but there's other things, right, Kieran? Yeah, exactly. And I'd say that one of the, possibly one of the reasons that um, people put so much focus on page speed is that 
over the years, Google's obviously always really kind of quiet on what does impact SEO. And one of the yeah. things that they're not quiet about is page speed. Yeah. Page speed is one of the things that they constantly talk about saying, yeah, yeah, make sure your website's fast. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that Google look at. Um, so yeah. yeah, it definitely is part of a bigger mix Then it's definitely worthwhile doing. But then also from a usability point of view, if yeah. you can change your images over to a different format that makes them load quicker, then realistically you can benefit there from improved uh, loading times on your site and people, your customers are, less chance of leaving yeah and it's like it's not just like oh it improves it on laptop you know it was this speed before on laptop and now it's the speed on laptop and you know you think about people using pretty fast wi-fi's anyway what you're really thinking about is people that are on the go they're using their mobile data you know using 3g or in some areas where they don't get 3g maybe on 2g you know it's, it's really about you know making sure that your content's being served to those guys that's where you really want to make sure and you can check that in um Oh, what am I thinking, Kieran, where you can change the speed of the device in Chrome? In Chrome, in yeah. Inspect Element in Chrome. So the developer tools uh, yeah. within there, you can actually um, spoof a, a slow internet connection. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then that would actually allow you to reload the page as if you were on a slow 3G network and actually see. I'm pretty sure as well, Google's page speed tool um, does also uh, mimic uh, slow 3G connection to show you kind of how quick it'd load as well. Does, um, does Google Analytics report on the internet connection of your users. So you can see like bounce rate from people using slow Wi-Fi or slow 2G. Uh, I'm not sure. I know it does in terms of uh, phones that people yeah, use yeah. like that, but I'm not sure. Not about connection internet. type. Yeah, maybe it does, maybe we just don't know. But yeah. that would be an awesome thing, right? Because then you could go, well, actually, yeah, I really need to think about this because I'm getting you know, 25% of my traffic from people that are on a really slow internet connection. And the bounce rate for this is terrible. The conversion rate for this is terrible. Okay, now let me go to PageSpeed Insights and really focus on. I mean, because they're the people you need to worry about. They're like the, the people you need to focus on. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, I kind of answered your question, but then kind of teased you with something that might not even exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so next question from Phil. Um, Phil, we used to work in the same office. So hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Um, can implementing schema impact rankings in any way? Um, do you want to go first, Kieran? Yeah, yeah. So um, obviously we were, we were discussing this in terms of realistically schema is there to kind of help Google understand what a page is about and, and really give a broken down um, st structured view of the data on a page. So instead of them having to sift through 500 words of content, you can give them um, specific things on the page. If say, for instance, it's an event or if it's a recipe or um, a review all of that information can be passed back to Google through um, schema and, and then schema can basically get a good understanding then of what the, um, what the website's about or what that specific page on the website is about. Um, and that itself uh, from, in terms of improving SEO performance on its own, again, as part of the mix, it, it does help. Um, but on its own, it probably wouldn't, it wouldn't have yeah. massive impact. No, like ranking, no ranking factor for including schema. It's not like, it, you know, Google goes to your site and goes, oh, these guys have got schema, you know, irrelevant of where it is, they get a little bit of an SEO boost. It doesn't, it's not like that. It's just more the fact that then, if, you know, if you've got two websites, right, like they're identical in every way, you know, and they're both local businesses. One of them, you know, they talk about the content, but the content's all in P tags. There's lots of it. You know, Google has to figure out what some of the content, is that an address? Is that their address? Is that, you know, an event, whatever? And then, you know, the equivalent website, same content, but the, the, the content's been marked up to Google, say, in schema, say, look, this, this Google is an address, or this, this is an event. Then Google understands that page better, then you're going to rank better because of that. So it's by virtue of Google being able to really understand the content better, rather than it being like, oh, you've got schema, there you go, it's five extra points for your SEO. Yeah. Not that there's points in SEO. But... No, I was going to say, yeah, don't start that rumor now. <laughs> yeah, but points mean what, Kieran? Prizes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome um so uh next one um hein, uh, hein, yep. um if you have to tell an entrepreneur um to make sure to do one thing that would help seo quickest and best what would that one thing be uh, and you can't just Easy. stay doing good seo, doing good SEO. <laughs> he, he knew he preempted what your response would have been um so <laughs> yeah. phrase, do good seo <laughs> 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 um yeah so we had a little conversation about this before and it's, it's a good question because we get it a lot and you kind of think, oh, it's, it's like a, this, this question isn't helpful. You never tell people to do one thing, but actually it is really helpful, right? 
clearly for restricted on time. And I mean, that's even why we built Hike, right? Because people don't know what they should do first or how long things are going to take. Little plug for Hike there. Um, but yeah, I think it really simple boils down to what I would do if I had one thing I could tell um, a business to do one thing, it would be um, go through your website, make sure that every piece of content on every page is unique. It talks about your products and services correctly. You know, it's detailed and it's using really good English and grammar and it's really clear. And so anyone could read it. Any, any of your types of customers could read it and understand straight away what it is. I think if you just do that, you'd have such a benefit from SEO because you'll do, by virtue of doing that process, you're doing loads of things that help SEO without you even realize doing it. Like, yeah. Does that make sense? Kieran, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, I do. I, I agree. I think, um, I think it's definitely, especially if you're not um, really technical in terms of being able to make large technical changes um, on, a, on a website. Um, I think content is definitely a great place to start. And, and also it's, it's easy to do. It's time consuming, but it is easy to do. Anyone can do it. Um, you can write content. And the benefit you've got is that you know your product better than anyone else. You know your product, your service better than anyone else. Um, so having that um, good quality fresh content, unique content on your website uh, and make it engaging as well. Add images in there, add videos in there as well, because at the end of the day, someone at the other end of the computer is going to read it. So you want to make sure that when they are reading it, they're, they're enjoying the process. Yeah. And you know, if you're not a good writer, like get someone who is, you know, like there's, there's really nothing worse than landing on a website and seeing spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. You know, because the person that wrote it, they are not, you know, that's not their skill set in writing great content. Find, you know, write the content and get a proofreader to go over it. Or find a copywriter and spend, you know, a hundred quid, or, you know, a few hundred quid and getting someone to just take your copy and make it sound really good. So, you know, Google does understand, like, it, it looks at readability scores. It looks at the quality of the content as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basic, but it, it does help. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a pretty good tip. Yeah. I'd and then know. next, just do really good SEO. <laughs> <Second thing today. laughs> after you've done content then really good seo really yeah. good seo really yeah. good <laughs> all right um, last question uh, from andrew plow um highly relevant this one with a, a latest release we had in height this week um so the question from andrew um should we be trying to optimize our google my business posts for keywords etc to rank for search terms or is it more important just to post frequently um so yeah really good question right you've got Google My Business posts, should you put your keywords in there? Is that gonna help you rank? Um, so there are no studies as such that have analyzed um, frequency, um, frequency or amount of keywords in Google My Business posts and then how it actually impacts your, your Google My Business posts ranking as such. So it's really hard. I mean, SEO is all about correlation anyway, rather than causation. Um, so it's really, really hard. To, to show that but there are lots of studies to show that just frequency of posts does help your your google my business um visibility so we don't know i can't tell you a definite answer if including your keywords helps but i know that frequency of posting does help i think one thing on the frequency side is that obviously google posts only last for seven days yeah so if you're posting and at seven days later that post disappears and, and it won't show well in most cases it disappears uh, we'll, yeah we'll come so that one. we we did a little bit of a um a little bit of testing before because we this week in hike we launched um a new feature in our hike local which allows you to track your google my business listings um performance in the google map results so obviously the google map results are important because you know, you get the map pack on like your main search page and then people also go straight to maps where it's on their mobile or on a desktop and they, and they search in there as well. Um, and one of the things we noticed when we were doing the testing is that what you see now in the Google Maps results is if you've got a review that mentions a keyword and if you've got a Google My Business post, they're starting to appear actually in the results. So let me um, share my screen. I think it'll make it be a lot easier to explain. Um, right. So yeah, one of the keywords that I was checking was SEO London. Um, and you can see here, right, this one here, Sponsors for Educational Opportunity. Now what makes their listing stand out is this little um, review snippet from one of their reviews, Exceptional Customer Service, SEO London Agency. And Google's bold, emboldened, I think is the phrase. Emboldened. 
Bow, emboldened, bolded. Emboldened. That's a good one for me, mate. SEO London. Just like they do in the search results, right? In the search results in your page style match script, you've got a keyword or a synonym, it'll embolden it. <laughs> um, and they're doing it here, right? So obviously, keywords within your uh, reviews are good um, because they get the visibility on the page, which makes you stand out, get a high click rate. Could even mean you get higher rankings in Google Maps. Um, but then we also did another search because what we also spotted is that the Google My Business posts get pulled through as well. Probably not going to show it now. It's good products, not product. Oh, uh, okay. I think there's one down there anyway. Oh yeah, because it's got the little icon, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So Dub SEO Agency. Now this one, let me just go to the one below it. There you go, that's a review snippet. They've pulled through and you can see the little icon for a review. Interestingly, it doesn't mention the keyword that still pulled it through, so maybe it does at some point in that review. But here, you've got this little eye icon, and you've got here, SEO consultation, SEO price it starts from, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, where does that come from? And that is actually coming from a Google My Business product post. So Kieran, what kind of post is this? If you were using Hike, for example, you want to recreate this? Oh, this is a what's new, like an update post. Um, is actually what's, so it actually, yeah, it's an update post that is shown within there. Yeah, cool. And you can see it as well if you go down to um, view previous updates on Google. So actually it was posted on the 30th. I don't think it's the same though. This was posted on the 30th of May. Oh, it just might have a different image. Yeah. Because all of those. So yeah, so that's actually a what's new that's then being pulled through and showing here in search results. And it obviously it's bold, emboldened, bolded, whatever, SEO. So it is using the keyword even not the whole one, SEO products, is still using the keyword from the Google My Business post. So that's kind of cool, right? Because it could mean that's why they rank above these guys or you know, rank where they do. Or even if they don't, it's just, you know, if I'm a searcher and I see that, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's within my price bracket, blah, blah, blah. And, and also they, they think it's really relevant to them because actually what they searched is within the content that shows underneath the thing. So I'd go on and go, oh, actually, they, they, these are the ones above might do what I, I want it to do based on the name and the company or stuff, but these actually specifically mention it. So actually are these going to be a better ones to go for. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, this, I think there's loads of reason why that's going to be benefiting them. And again, it's the keyword in the Google, my business post. So yeah, there's this, we can't say for certain, there's not like studies or, you know, causation studies, but looking at what's in the results, you can start to see Google feeding that information through. So whenever Google likes to do stuff like that, just capitalize on it. Absolutely capitalize on it. All right. I think we're done. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Kieran. And 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 you, Andy, as well. Thank you for the, the education on a new word as well. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna use that one everywhere I go now. Um <laughs> but no, thank you for all of your questions. And like I say, once we've uh, posted this, keep a lookout um for a, a future post where we may ask them more questions. Um and yeah, we'll, we'll do another AMA, I'm sure, very soon. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Bye.